Ah, oh, hell. I'm in the wrong game again. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's me on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Echo, TJ's Path. So, I can't sleep right now, and uh, it's four. It's literally 4.20 in the morning. That's really funny. I can't sleep right now. I'm not even tired. Um, I don't know what's going on with my body chemistry. Maybe it was, like, mixing caffeine with one of those daytime edibles. But I, I did it, like, hours and hours earlier. It shouldn't... I don't know. Nah, I probably did something wrong, but... Anyway, y'all, I'm here to bring you more entertainment, so let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. I'll make it a little quiet, because roomies are sleeping. Alright, what? What was that? TJ's whispering, but it's a loud sort of whisper, almost deafening in the quiet forest. What do you mean? I kissed you, TJ. I, I love you. The look of pure shock and horror on TJ's face stuns me. What? What are you talking about? TJ, you're asking really dumb questions right now. You heard me. I feel myself getting a little irritated. I just bared my soul to him, and I was acting like I just told him a terrible secret. But you mean like a friend? No, I mean like a boyfriend, a lover. I reach out again, but this time TJ twists away from me and then starts to back up, back the way we came from. I follow him. Well, how come? I can see his rapid breathing, his wide eyes like a cornered animal. I feel myself get angrier. What do you mean, how come? Do I need to explain it to you? He just keeps backing up, and I see what looks like fear in his eyes. I don't understand it at all. He starts to turn around, but I grab his arm. Hey! You flirt with me all fucking week, and you're asking why? What the fuck are you talking about? Chase, let me go. He tries to pull away weakly, but I yank him forward so hard his teeth clack together in front of my face. He gasps. You make my you make eyes at me across the table at the diner while we're doing yard work at Janice's house, and you don't get why? Why the hell am I getting so angry? Let me go! Gigi's still whispering, but it gets getting louder. So, you were just leading me on. I feel my voice break as it rises in volume as well. What is happening? Why am I doing this? Is this a dream? Were you leading me the fuck on, TJ? I see tears brimming in TJ's eyes, and he looks away from me, like a kid that just got caught doing something wrong. Do I need to tell you again? TJ, I fucking love you. I've known you. I've known it since I picked you up from the college. Listen to me. I pull him closer, but as I do, he lashes out. I see a flash of light, and the next thing I know, TJ's escaped my grasp. My paw is still stuck out in the air as I watch the lynx disappear through the trees. Soon the sounds of his footsteps fade as well, and I'm left alone in the deathly quiet forest. I stare for a long while, listening to the nothingness, maybe waiting for TJ to come back, for Julian to come up with a path to beat me up. But nothing happens. I don't know how long I stand there, but when I look up, I see that the sun has finally set. I numbly lift the camera in my other hand, still holding on to it like I when I kissed TJ. Slowly, I walk over to the bag and kneel down, putting the camera away. That's when I feel the nape of my neck prickle. TJ? Look back, hopefully, but the path is empty. The forest, though? The trees and branches and leaves that outline the path, just before it curves out of sight, just 15 feet ahead of me. There's a shape in the trees, the shape of legs, arms, a torso, and maybe a head. The shadowy figure seems to blend into the leaves, almost melting into the twilight. I blink hard, but when I open my eyes, the figure is still there, unmoving, unchanged. That's when I realize that even though I'm holding my breath, I can still hear breathing comes from the direction of the shape, even though it doesn't have move at all. It looks like a painting. Slowly I stand up. It doesn't move. I start to walk forward, and that's finally when it changes. It starts to melt back into the trees, but the branches and leaves don't move. It moves through them. Then as I reach the bend in the path, it fades into nothing. But the breathing continues. I look around finally and see that it's gotten dark to the point that I can barely make anything out. I can't do that voice right now. Everything that you see is twisted from what it once was. But what is it? It was something once, just like I was. But nothing here is obligated to make sense to you. But what does it want? What does anything here want? The only thing you know for sure is that it's evil. And just like that, I'm running up the rest of the path, feeling as if the branches are clawing at me, trying to pull me back into the forest. And still, the breathing continues just over my shoulder, growing ragged with my own, following me, chasing me. I feel it closing in on me, gasping, taking on a robotic tone. As if someone's taking their last breath through a phone, and I'm the one on the other end of it, and listening to it. A crackling breath hisses out, and rises up into a screech of static and noise, and... I break through the trees, landing in the ditch and jamming two fingers in the process as I throw my paws out to catch myself. I don't care, though. I scramble out of the ditch, gasping for breath. I look up, hoping to see TJ, Julie, and even Janice, but... No one's there. Both cars are gone. I'm left alone on the road in the, in the silence and increasing darkness.
I'll walk back to the motel alone. I hope to see Jillian's truck in the parking lot when I get there. But he isn't, but it isn't. Instead, there's the typical two or three cars along with my own. I still have hope as I may wake up as I may as I make my way to the door. TJ will be in the bathroom taking a sh maybe TJ will be in the bathroom taking a shower. I drink some water, y'all. Got cotton mouth. Maybe he'll already be asleep. Maybe he'll be awake and we can just forget what happened. Chat until it's late. Order a pizza like we did at Carl's house. But as I press the key card back, pre key card to the lock and it flashes green and I open the door, I don't see TJ at all. It's dark and empty. That's finally when I realize that TJ's left me as well. My mind is blank as I walk through the motel room. Only then realizing I left the camera in the forest. I don't care though. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters anymore. I curl up on the bed and cry for a long time. Oh, excuse me. I don't care how loud I am. I'm sure if anyone here hears it, they've heard worse. The employee at the front desk probably hears it every week because that's just the way the town is. I fall asleep. When I wake up, I can't move. I don't care, though. It doesn't matter anymore. Even though I know better, I open my eyes. Weirdly enough, the motel is as I left it. Disheveled with the lights on. Nothing horrible at all until I hear footsteps at the base of my bed. I brace myself for it, but open my eyes up. I don't know why. I guess it feels like I'm punishing myself for what I did to TJ. I lay there on my side, curled up and waiting as the footsteps make their way around the bed. I don't know what I expect my mind to conjure up. Maybe the demon in the forest, the evil, electric creature that breathed into my ears I ran from it, jumping from tree to tree behind me. But what I didn't expect to see is a small old kid fox in a button-up shirt and a tie. I watch as he sets a card down on the little table next to my bed. I get a moment to see a silver ring on his finger and the worn black claws. Then he picks up a bottle from the table that isn't there and takes a swig from it. Then he moves close. Then he moves over to the closet rod, clothes that I don't recognize hanging from it. He's got a cord of some kind in his paws. He starts to tie it up on the rod while the other end gets tied around his neck. I know what he's doing. Now I try to close my eyes, but something seems to hold them open. This is too real. The fox braces himself against the wall, and I see his face clearly. Kind, weary, hopeless. And then he sits, but he doesn't completely sit because the cord pulls taut and he's left with his leg at a loose slant on the ground. I see his eyes bulge, turning red at the same time those eyes meet mine, and I think he sees me. I gasp and sit up in the bed, but he doesn't disappear, he lingers. It's only when he starts to go into convulsions that he begins to fade away. I hug my knees, my back pressed against the headboard as the headboard of the bed as the fox continues to stare at me and completely disappears. It was real. It was, it was real. Was... Something's different. Something's wrong in the air. The sound from the bathroom makes me look over at the closed door. Something's in there. Automatically, I get up. It's like I'm not in control of my own body anymore. It's like I'm still in a dream, even though I know I'm not. I get to the door and stand there a little while, listening to the breathing inside. Then I open it. I stand there for a while, staring in. The light from the room pours into the bathroom, but it isn't enough to show me anything out of the ordinary. I feel it, though. There's an energy in there pulling me in. Slowly, I step inside, looking around, my heart hammering in my chest. I'm not scared. Not anymore. It's a sort of anticipation instead of fear, like I've been waiting for this ever since I got to Echo. I don't know if I believe in ghosts now, but I know what's happening here is real. I wait, feeling the cold tiles of the bathroom against the pads of my feet. I'm not sure how long I stand there in complete silence. It could be anywhere from one minute to ten, but that's finally when I get an answer. Close the door, close the door. I don't hear anything, but I feel it, and I feel it coming from my left. I look, but I don't see anything. This isn't like the other times when I'd hear him inside my head. No, the voice inside me is hiding right now. Like, even he's afraid of this. Still, I sense it. Even though I start to feel that fear again, I reach out for the door. Close it, close it, close the door. For a brief moment, I have a sudden realization of where I am, what I'm doing. And what's happening, but it's not enough to stop me. There's a haze over my mind, over everything, like I'm in a deep, dark dream that I can't come up from. I think I've lost my mind, or I'm dead. Either way, it doesn't matter anymore. I push the door closed, but not fully, letting just a crack of light in so that through, so that through the mirror I can see the outline of the fur on the left side of my head. As I'm looking at that, as I'm looking at that, I start to get the feeling that it's not me in the mirror. 
I look, I look shorter, smaller, and something's wrong with my face. I can almost see what looks like the corner of his mouth stretched all the way across the jaw. It's like I saw in the diner bathroom five days ago? I don't know, it feels so long. But it's then that I realize the presence I feel is coming from this thing in the mirror. We stare at each other for a long time, the fear rising and rising until it's almost overwhelming. My feet won't move. My mind won't reason with what's happening. I'm in a nightmare. This is real. The mirror whispers at me. I see the grotesque mouth move with raspy, whispering words. Slowly, I move a little closer to the mirror, ducking my head down a bit, reaching up to touch my cheek where I see the widened gash of a mouth. The reflection does the same, but when I touch my face, I only feel, so I only feel smooth fur, even as the fingers in, my, in the mirror brush against the opening. What's happening? I ask myself when my reflection responds. It's been happening for eons. What was supposed to happen to everyone else in this town, but you stopped it. What? Coming back here with your secret. Almost started it, but now that everyone's about to find out. What are you talking about? This town might actually survive if they find out. Find out what? I bring both paws back up and press against the sides of my face as if to cover up the gaping mouth. You know what? I squint at the reflection, trying to figure out why it just looks so familiar. Sydney? There's a raspy, rustling sound. And I see the thing in the mirror shake, its head twitching from side to side, far too fast to be anything of this world. I take a step back. Dread rises in my chest. No. No, this was supposed to be over. I'm not supposed to see things anymore. You always knew they were wrong. Always knew that what you saw was real. Nothing normal about this. But it's not me seeing things again that's got me feeling the way I do. No. What secret are you talking about? Again, that raspy sound of rustling leaves, sounding old and forgotten. That's what it feels like I'm talking to. Something old, monolithic, and ancient. You don't need me to tell you. I grasp my shirt, twisting the fabric in my paws, feeling like I might panic, that I might go insane. Already insane. But how's anyone going to find out? No one knows. You know that's not true. Who is responsible for the cruel joke? I swallow hard. Someone knows. No, that that was that was something else. They didn't know. It was a stupid prank on me to make me look bad, to ruin our vacation. Vacation. Is that what I'm on right now? That thought is foolish, and you know it. It was definitely foolish. You know who it was, and after what you did to him. I see myself pinning the lizard in the parking lot, holding back from pounding his face into nothing. He is going to tell everyone. No. I hear myself whine, feeling like a child, like a small creature in the mirror. Yes, unless... I wait, feeling tears well up in my eyes, knowing that my life is about to change forever. The silence drags on and on until I finally break it. What? I can help you keep the secret. I wait a while longer, but the reflection stays quiet. I get the sense that time is going faster than I perceive it, my legs aching from standing here very rigidly on the cold floor, the cold tile floor. Help me? I can tell you what you can do to keep things the way they are. I feel a small ray of hope pierce through the towering cloud of impending doom in my chest. How? There's a dark pause, a moment that marks, and in between, between what was and what's about to become. I know things can't truly stay the way they are. They never do. Another split in my life, just like what happened years ago. Finally, the thing speaks, and I hear exactly what I expect. Do the same. To the lizard. I swallow, feeling myself resisting, rejecting the idea. Unless you want them all to know your secret. But how do I know it was him? He sounded like he had no idea what we were doing. He's deceptive. A liar. His entire family has always been. But I can't. If I don't know for sure. Show him the note. You'll see his reaction. The truth. My paw drifts to my pocket, filling the gentle outline of the folded paper. Who are you? The rustling leaves again, and I realize that while this might be Sydney, it's something more than Sydney. It doesn't answer me. We stand there for a long time again. Minutes, hours, I don't know. Why would you help me? This time, the answer is immediate. This town needs secrets. Why? Again, no answer. I stand there where it feels like hours. As I continue to stare at the small, disfigured creature, I get the feeling that it's starting to move independent from me. The thought scares me and I lift my paws. I'm relieved to see the reflection do the same, but as soon as I touch my face, I feel the corner of my mouth stretched up to my ears. 
In a sudden burst of panic, I lunge for the light switch and flip it on. I'm stunned as I'm bathed by blinded yellow light, and I have to shut my eyes for a moment before opening them. I see myself in the mirror as I've always been, staring back blearily. My eyes are bloodshot, and my figure seems to sag with exhaustion. I stand there for a while, feeling my mind caught up even more as I go over what just happened. But a violent shiver comes over my body, like I'm suffering a high fever. I feel sick. My skin is sensitive and my joints are sore, and after a moment, I move back into the motel. I can see that it's light outside through the curtains. How long was I in there? It must have been hours. I don't care. Still shivering, I head for the closet closest bed, sliding under the covers of my clothes and laying my head against the pillow. I realize that this is Jenna's bed, and I can smell her perfume along with the faint scent of fox musk on the pillow. Where was she again? I can't even remember through the haze in my head. Jesus. Really messed up, man. Oh boy, so my guess is that, yeah, I'll save it for the end of the video. I think I fall asleep, but I'm not sure. A sudden knock at the door makes me jump. I curl up tighter under the covers, hoping that I just dreamed it, or that whoever is outside just goes in, just goes away. And the knock again, followed by Leo's voice. Otter, you in there? I cringe, squeezing my eyes shut, having completely forgotten about him. Why did he chosen to show up now? I lay still for a moment, then he yells again, which makes me jump out of the bed, cringing at the pain in my joints. Groggily, I stumble to the door, leaning against it for a moment as I feel lightheaded, trying to gather myself. Finally, I fix my face into a tired smile before opening the door. Leo stands there, his ears perked, eyes wide as if he hadn't expected me to open the door. Oh, hey, Chase, are you alright? He reaches out to rest a paw on my shoulder, looking me over. Yeah, I was up all night doing my project. I, I left it until the last minute. I give him a sheepish grin. Leo clicks his tongue at me. Isn't that due tomorrow? And aren't you driving home all day today? I shrug. I'll be fine. If you say so, Otter. He continues to stare at me with a look of concern. But what's up? Well, I guess I'm just sorry that I haven't been around more this week. I, well, I guess I was just being a bit unfair to you. I wrecked my brain for a reason while Lee was apologizing to me, or how exactly he'd been unfair to me. I guess I've just been a bit down because you weren't talking to me as much as I thought you would. Alright, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. So, it seems that Chase is the one who probably inadvertently killed Sydney. And apparently now... Uh... Yeah. Apparently now he's gonna be going after Flynn, so... Oh lord, this has taken quite a turn, y'all. Oof. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye